Hello and welcome, folks. Thanks for tuning in to uh, Tri-Side Circle, a movie podcast that's title is almost guaranteed to change. Uh, my name's Harper, a self-proclaimed number one Gregor Rocky fan. Um, I don't think there's really anything else I need to describe about myself. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, I talk about movies all day, uh, every day pretty much by myself and in my head so i said hey i'm gonna do it with a microphone this time so here we are anywho um for today's topic uh i want to talk jawbreaker um a film by darren stein from 1999 great film with one of my favorite actresses rose mcgowan uh, but before we kind of get into that, um, I just want to, I just kind of want to talk a little bit more about, you know, what's going to, what this podcast is all about, but yeah, we're going to, you know, hopefully, um, it's always going to be unscripted, so I'm going to definitely be making a lot of pauses and dumb, dumb little breaks, so forgive me for that one. I'm also still figuring out if I need to do anything, really. I hope not. I'm just going to upload a bunch of this and not edit it like almost at all so yeah and hopefully that's fine (laughs) uh but if uh, not i don't really care but we're gonna anyway we're gonna talk about some movies we're gonna talk about you know reviewing them we're gonna talk about what's good in them and then we might uh get into some 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 juicy stuff about the film industry and you know what's just what's hip happening around on you know, what's on the block, as they say these days. Anyway, Jawbreaker. All right. So I just saw Jawbreaker for the first time, I think yesterday, actually. Um, And oh my goodness, guys, it is so, it is so genuinely one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's, it's not, not even funny. Uh, it's not my favorite movie of all time. There's, uh, but they share, they share, share an actress, which is all, all I'll say. Um, but yeah, so Jawbreaker, uh, as a little bit, bit of a background, um, so Darren Stein, um, it, this is his second, second full film. Um, he had another film called Sparkler in 97, I believe. Uh, yeah, 97. And it got okay reviews. It's not, there's nothing super great, but it, um, you know, a lot of people like it. So that's, you know, he had a, he had a good first hit and look at him go. He's got a second film now, which, um, is, it's kind of up in the air. What some people think of it, uh, especially if you just look at letterbox, like it has a 3.4 right here. Um, so, I mean, it depends on who you are, but there's also a noticeable, A big noticeable uh, little line there. And it's also, it's the five-star line there, which um, I'm just saying there are people who enjoy this movie, so I'm not the only one. But I will be the advocate for this movie because, God, it's so amazing and I love it very much. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Darren Stein, uh, his second full feature. um, uh, And, you know... Just another side tangent about Darren Stein. He has a uh, his most recent picture is called GBF, and um, that's the, only, the I knew of that movie uh, a, a long time ago, and I think I watched it. I I did watch it actually. I wasn't paying attention, and this was like kind of before I like was paying super close attention to films and stuff. So I wanna I wanna give that movie a go, but I remember I hated that movie. Um, so. <laughs> so there we go. Um, anywho, uh, back to Jawbreaker. Back to the good film. Um, uh, you know, so our synopsis is honestly, it's just Heather's, uh, and that's okay. Uh, if you guys also hear cars splish splashing some water outside my window, I'm sorry. Um, I'll, I can maybe try to edit that out, but who knows? Uh, anywho, uh, yeah, so. This 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 entire plotline is basically Heather's, but instead of like going to dance and actually and accidentally killing her there, um, 
four ma- four girls in this clique. Um, they uh, kidnap one of their one of the four girls in the clique, and they put a jawbreaker in her mouth, so that way she doesn't scream this time. And they put her in the back of the car, and they you know they uh, bring her to the pancake place that where they're gonna celebrate her birthday and stuff. And they open the car, and the jawbreaker's in her throat, and she uh, choked to death, you know, on the jawbreaker. Uh, so crazy start to the film immediately however it's a great start to the film too it really it's it's really catches you um there's a little bit of like a mean girls introduction as well um uh it honestly yeah it's also very mean girls uh esque uh you could basically just call the four main girls the plastics and you'd be right um but there's there's just something more there's something so much more fun about these characters because they have a lot more freedom since they're not working with a PG-13 rating or whatever. Actually, what? I don't know what uh, what Jawbreaker is rated, but I think, I mean, I would assume it's rated R or something. I don't know. Ratings like that don't really uh, matter at all, so I don't care. But Because uh, this one is definitely... Uh, s- I don't want to use the word sexier, but I'm going to say sexier than Mean Girls. Um, that's for sure. But any anywho, um, so yeah, Rose McGowan plays uh, Courtney Shane. Rebecca Gayhart plays uh, Julie, and Julie Benz plays Marcy Fox. And then I cannot remember who plays Liz Per at the moment. I'm trying to look. Um, Charlotte Ayana plays Liz Per. Those are the four uh, main girls at the start. Uh, Charlotte Ayana, honest, obviously, since she, you know, uh, dies, isn't in the film for uh, very long. Uh, but they have some, like, flashback scenes with her. And, I mean, she's fine. She's really not, like... I mean, it's it's kind of hard to, like, even judge how her acting because she's there for such a limited amount of time. Um, uh, but, yeah. Rose McGowan in this film is just absolutely bananas. Uh, I mean, I think you can tell that by just reading reading a lot of the reviews on Letterboxd about how Rose, this is probably like one of her best performances outside of, I would probably say, The Doom Generation, because that's my favorite film of all time, which I will eventually talk about. I could say a million things about that. I called myself number one Gregoraki defender for a reason, all right? Uh, anywho, sorry, not to, not to overhype myself here, um, but... Rose McGowan in this film is just bananas. Uh, Courtney Shane is is like is like actually just Satan, uh, but she plays it so well, and she plays she like steals every scene she's in. She just she's so commanding of the role, and she's just so aggressive, and she gets it. And her and she she just like times the comedy perfectly, and it's so amazing. Not saying that these other actors aren't doing anything. But I'm saying Rose McGowan definitely is do- is doing a lot here, and it's just amazing to watch. Um, uh, one, I gotta pause for a moment. I'll be right back. I don't know if I can even cut, but we're gonna cut here. Anywho, sorry about that one, folks. I had to go and put put laundry into. Uh, the you know the other one the dryer that's the one anyway i forgot where we were but here i'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna back up for a sec um we're talking i think we were talking about the actors we were talking about how great rose mcgowan is i know that because i will i i could probably talk about her performance in this movie and you could show i could show a clip and i could talk about it probably endlessly um <laughs> so Anywho, Rebecca Gayhart playing Julie is, uh, honestly, is, it's kind of sweet. She, t- she, um, you know, she plays the loyal one who, um, like, or not loyal, a moral, I guess, <laughs> uh, one who, like, just wants to go to the police, you know, and get things straightened around and, you know, the, basically what a normal human reaction is. Um, and then we get Julie Benz who plays this, uh, um, Foxy or Marcy Fox. Um, and she's just, she's the dumbest character, and it's so funny, and, like, she plays the dumb character really well. I know that's, like, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing to say, but she does it really well, and it's very entertaining, so I think that's a good thing. 
And Judy Greer plays a character named Fern. Uh, so I guess, uh, ba- I mean, the synopsis is kind of pretty standard. I mean, you kind of know like what happens, but I guess from where, where I am now, I guess we're going to get into spoiler territory. Um, so I guess if you haven't seen Jawbreaker and you're really, and you're going to be super bummed about, uh, finding out what happens with the death of Liz Per, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe don't watch this one. Maybe go watch it instead. Actually go watch it instead because it's a great film. Anywho, Judy Greer plays uh, Fern Mayo, a character who witnesses the death after uh, getting like Liz, uh, Liz Per's assignments to drop off at the house. Um, which she plays, you know, she plays this character that's just so susceptible to Rose McGowan. And it's just like, I've never felt more seen in a, in a character before. So it's fun to watch her for that aspect. But then, uh, you know... So once Rose McGowan, or Courtney Sheen, I should say, gets a hold of Fern, uh, she turns Fern into Violet, basically the new uh, Liz Purr. Uh, because, you know, uh, their clique is getting destroyed. It was destroyed because one of them died and they needed a replacement. And because Fern saw, you know, she cannot be the replacement. So she becomes this whole new uh, persona, Violet, who is super fun to watch um i'm not gonna lie it's it is very funny to think (laughs) it's just i love i love movies with absurdity and this movie is very absurd uh but the fact that she just like comes to school in this bright red ass fucking sports car and like parks like right on uh, right at the front of the uh the front of the school and shit is just really funny to me um I don't know. It's just that some of the situations that they set themselves up for are very are, are very entertaining, and I think that's I think that's uh, I think that's epic sauce, uh, as one could say. Um, but yes, Jodie Greer play playing Fern Mayo and Violet is just so so fascinating. <laughs> um, Courtney Shane, like I said, is probably by far my uh, my the best character in the film. Uh, we also get. Uh, some other characters, uh, like the jock, I don't even really remember his name, that's how, like, little of an impact the jock character is, uh, Dane Sanders, um, is his name, it's, and he's basically, you know, just, uh, uh, Rose McGowan's, uh, fuck buddy, essentially, like, I mean, that's all, uh, she was about, she was actually gonna, uh, you know, plan, she, I think she had sex in the bed, in Liz Purr's bed, so that way she can incriminate him into going away. Uh, you know, and then eventually, uh, towards the end of the movie, you know, prom comes and all this comes to light with a spectacular explosion of, uh, you know, Courtney, uh, getting exposed essentially through a little, uh, like one of those little CBS cars that you can flip open and record a message into, uh, <laughs> like one of those dealios. And it, it captured her saying, I killed, I killed Liz, you know, and it was like a, a big shocker moment to everybody. And there's a, and the scene where she just walks out and is getting like shit thrown, like, or not shit, I guess it's just like corsages from like all the prom stuff, you know, uh, you know, and she's running out and it's like this slow kind of like, it's like, it's so slow and it's very silly because it's so slow of her walking through and then it cuts back to the people throwing corsages and then it cuts back to her face and she's like trying to like... In the scene, she, like, stretches her face a little bit to, like, make her more, like, I guess, ugly, quote-unquote. But she's so unbelievably pretty. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's not even, like, a joke. Like, she, like, stretches it and, like, I just am, like, God, you are such a beautiful lady. Uh, anyway, sorry. This is getting off topic a little bit. My, uh, you know, the the romantic in me is coming out, I suppose. Anywho, um, uh, you know, I want to talk about, I guess, some other characters, like, uh, like I said, Dane Saunders wasn't really, like, the best supporting character, I guess, um, 
Pam Greer, though, uh, plays uh, Vera Cruz, the detective, and I really enjoyed her performance, honestly. Uh, I know it's a little bland, but it kind of works because playing a bland detective is kind of funny, I think. I think it, I think it kind of works. Uh, I think it kind of works because most detectives, like, innately have charm, but, like, playing a detective with, like, little charm kind of comes off as appealing sometimes. And she does it well, um... And she just says some funny things in the detective's room. And uh, that's, that's, I mean, all you need is a couple good scenes and you're, you're golden. Um, but yeah, I think she does a great, uh, I mean, I think that's pretty much most of the main cast. There's a few others. Uh, we got like, like, you know, like some of their parents, uh, Zach Tartak, um, who I can't even remember. I think he's just another jock guy. If I, if I'm remembering correctly, I mean, like you know, and they don't, they don't play, uh, you know, they don't, there's nothing, most of the focus is obviously on the four characters, especially, uh, Rose McGowan and, uh, Judy Greer is Courtney and, um, and, um, uh, Violet. And there is also, like, you know, there's, um, uh, all right, oh, wait, I'm stupid. Zach is, uh, the love interest for Julie, right? So this is the other thing that I was just about to get into, actually. So yeah, uh, there's a subplot in here that uh, uh, Julie has a falling out with, you know, the group because she's the one, in, the one that wants to be moral, and she starts dating the head of the act uh, of the play, uh, and I think it's Zach Tartak. I thought his name was Shane in the film, but I guess I'm dumb. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess so. His name's Zach, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So they, you know, they are. Uh, she'll eventually confide in Zach, and you know it'll lead to what hap- happening in the movie and stuff. And he'll put he'll put the thing over the loudspeakers that's saying uh, Rose killed uh, Liz, or Courtney killed Liz. Sorry, Rose Rose McGowan. Every time I just see her, I can't think of her as a character. I just think of her as herself because I I know her so well outside of acting from her uh, from her activism uh, and just like those types of interviews that she's had so i i very much don't see her as a character anymore i see her as herself just playing you know characterizations of herself and she's just so fantastic everything i've seen her in so far has just been f- absolutely phenomenal i mean it also helps that they were gregor rocky projects <laughs> but but uh honestly going back to jawbreaker it very much kind of has um I wouldn't say a Greg or Rocky vibe. I would say uh, more, not, I wouldn't say punky either, but like light punk because it's very, it's very edgy, I would say. It's not, like I said, it's not, it's not Mean Girls because it's a little edgier than Mean Girls, but it's not like, it's not as edgy as something like uh, White Chicks, I would say. It's kind of like a good, I guess, this is a very weird, like, I'm like weird way to categorize it, but, um, uh, uh, if we're going from similar films, uh, uh, we have Heather's, Mean Girls, The Duff, Book Smart, She's All That, and uh, Do Revenge. I have only not seen She's All That. This is on Letterbox, by the way. I'm going to be using Letterbox as a way because Letterbox just helps me talk, <laughs> and it's pretty to look at. Anywho, Heather's is an obvious inspiration just because, you know, it like friends accidentally killing a a friend they had that's in high school that's just heathers i mean they kind of heathers kind of just did that first you know um and it is very and it's also it's kind of reminiscent of heathers in a way that um uh oh goodness uh rose mcgowan kind of uh like encompasses winona Ryder as um uh veronica like a little bit um i feel like if you did like a character analysis between courtney shane and veronica there's there's a there's a fun amount of similarities maybe not a great amount but like a good amount of similarities you could link to each other and then you know me and girls as i said because just like the plastics idea and like you know uh making it about segregation in high school i suppose the duff because the duff is basically just mean girls uh, book smart because I don't, I, I mean, book smart, I could kind of see, um, book smart is, I haven't seen it in a while, but I don't really remember much high school aspect. I know it's based on their last day of high school, 
but I mostly remember Booksmart for its drug scene and its boat scene. So I guess I can't speak to that. I haven't seen it in a while. Maybe this is a sign that I should re-see Booksmart. Um, I haven't seen uh, She's All That, but actually Do Revenge I have seen recently. And um, Do Revenge is kind of, eh, I would say, yeah, it's eh, you could definitely make a case for it being uh, similar to this style uh just because it it's very much about you know people just being bitchy in high school and like (laughs) people taking advantage of it and other people not being so good about it also there's also a character that is already there and gets a makeover and pretends to be a new person at school and do revenge and there's also that in jawbreaker too so that's i guess that also i guess that makes sense there too uh (laughs) Um, but yeah, I mean, that's Jawbreaker. Uh, I really, uh, I mean, we can talk about some of the pacing a little bit because, uh, that was kind of my biggest gripe with the film, I think. Um, it does, it feels very much like But I'm a Cheerleader. It very feels much like that cult classic film, um, like, feel that, you know, you're kind of, that you're not like looking for i guess but that um just comes off because of the era that it's shot in um and it uh, it kind of has some editing things like in but i'm a cheerleader because but i'm a cheerleader does some of these um i guess kind of like abrupt silly uh transitions that they're not afraid to shy away from from time to time and jawbreaker has a few of those um there is some there are some weird edits um, I remember uh, there's a scene where I think it's like when they're coming uh, back to school for the first time uh, after Liz died. Um, and Courtney uh, looks over, I think, at Dane, I think it is. And he says, hey, babe. And he like flicks his tongue and it has that like the like, blah, blah, blah. like, I don't know how to describe it sound, but like it's there. And I'm just like. I get it's funny. It made me chuckle really hard because it doesn't ever happen again. And it's the first time. And it's just so loud, too. And I'm just... I'm very... I want to know why that was implemented. Like, I kind of I kind of need to know. Because um, it's just... it's, it's It was so striking to me. And it, like I said, it doesn't happen again. There are moments that try to be as crazy or like just weird in editing like that but it doesn't come off the same and it, but it is it's just so very it's very silly it's a very it's it has very silly moments um now i think uh you know i think pacing in this film is not the best um there are some uh some issues where it feels like this movie's going by a little too fast and then it, it or not too fast but it feels like the movie's going right and then i think there's a little bit of a slug um when we're introducing three new characters and also the play setting um this is where so after violet kind of gets introduced and we're uh you know people are like fawning over her she gets into the play so when or she tries to get into the play to date um zach because she needs a boyfriend which is also like a new plot line that we're going through so there's like a lot of plot lines being tackled and i don't think they're all fully executed and that's okay um i'm gonna look past it because again the performances are so good and i like the aesthetic um like to me you can you can make uh like a very pretty movie like a little too long and i think i would still be very happy with it um because i just i i kind of i'm one of the people that just loves i love sitting in film worlds uh because it's better than reality you know what i mean so you just i just love sitting there in that world and i don't really care how long the film takes which is why i'm never like a per like if someone's like, do you want to see this like four hour movie? I'm like, sure. Because I'm just not one of those per I'm just a person who I can sit down and I can do that. Um, I mean, I may need a break every once in a while, but like, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very capable of doing that. And I, and this movie's only an hour and 27 ish minutes. Um, so it's not a super long film by any means either. And I think that was also kind of my problem is cause like, I think if they, 
I think if they were to have fleshed it out just to just a hair, just to maybe maybe an hour forty length, uh, just to give it that little extra bit of time to kind of flesh out some of these ideas and um, kind of just, I guess, bolster um, this uh, this like plot line that they're trying to achieve at the very kind of like in the middle end ish of the film, um, but that's fine. Because as is, I still really enjoy the film, and um, I just think it's very goofy. Um, like I said, it could be better, but that's I, I'm I, I'm I'm very much willing to overlook its flaws in this case because uh, Rose McGowan unironically is like a super powerhouse in this movie. I cannot I cannot stress it enough. I know I talked about it at length already, but God fucking damn it, is she amazing? She's like it's so 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 good. Uh like I mean uh, this is maybe her best performance. Um just because she she like actually is so commanding of like all these scenes and it's, it's great. It's awesome and I'm I love it so much. Um I'm trying to see if there's anything else I want to talk about or put uh put word in on Jawbreaker here before we uh close out to maybe our next segment. Um uh, I do think, uh, oh, um, sorry, I, I was reading other things, but, uh, the, the moment, uh, where we realize that, uh, Fern is, like, obsessed with Liz was a very wholesome moment. I very much like that, <laughs> because that means that movie, this movie is gay, and that's just, a, that's a good, that's a good, uh, thing to do good good little good little you know uh flavor adder but i did i did like that scene a lot uh when you know uh she was kind of confide, confiding and i can't remember i think it was a teacher uh just kind of describing how perfect liz was and i was like yeah i've been there before um so that's pretty awesome and i i i, I like to see that stuff you know i think it's i think it's cute um anyway um um Let's talk about some things that have been happening in the film industry. Right now, I'm just going to scroll through Twitter just to kind of see some stuff that's happening. Um, Timothy Chalamet uh, being frontrunner for Best Ask Oscar uh, winner this year, which I've heard is... Uh, I'm super excited to watch The Complete Unknown. Um, uh, actually, they have a... They have predicted nominees up uh so i guess you know what let's let's let me see what i say so we get performer and the film of course uh we get timothy chalamet for complete unknown ralph yannis for conclave i still unfortunately have not seen conclave uh coleman domingo for sing sing i haven't seen sing sing yet either and i'm actually about to uh, i was probably gonna set that one up tonight so i'm excited uh, Adrian Brody for The Brutalist, which I'm beyond the moon over excited for The Brutalist. Um, I think that is going to be one of the most important pieces of art, uh, period, um, like going forward, because I think, I think just the uh, budget amount um, is shocking people so much that it genuinely is making more of a general audience be like how the hell does red one cost 250 million dollars whereas this three hour war drama that's beautifully produced only costing i think it's i think the max is like 13 mil hold on let's i'm gonna i'm gonna fact check myself here real quick um sorry the brutal i know we were doing oscar things but i really want to talk i uh, talk about the brutalist when i see it uh as well um, so, uh, let's see, budget six to $10 million. That's, uh, honestly insane because it's a three thirty yeah, three hours, 35 minutes, uh, for a war drama costing $6 million is just kind of six to 10, sorry, is, is beyond absurd. Um, so anyway, and then we also have Paul Mescal for Gladiator 2, which I haven't, I don't think is out currently. I think um I think early premieres are starting, but I don't think it's out to general audiences yet. 
Um, uh, in a complete unknown, obviously, uh, isn't out yet either. Um, Sing Sing and I think th- I'm not sure if the Brutalist is out. I don't think it is. I think it's coming December. Um, but I. I'm okay with this list. There are definitely people that I would have liked to see. Um, uh, one obviously being, um, uh, sorry, one obviously being, uh, Justice Smith for, um, for Owen and I saw the TV glow. Um, uh, now I know a lot of people don't agree with me on that, but, uh, (laughs) and that's fine because I get that it may not be the best performance of the year. And I get that, but I still would love to just see it nominated or like, um, hinted, you know? Um, and I would really, uh, I would really just like to see that because, uh, uh, I saw the TV glow is one of the most important films of the year, I think. Um, and it, you know, for a lot of, a lot of reasons, uh, um, it's it's important not only to me as you know as a trans person or anything but it's important to just the entire trans community it's been such a eye opener and so um and so just so it's been it's helped so many people realize uh themselves and i think that's i think that's the magic of film in general you know and seeing that and seeing it gets so much praise even outside of the Oscars, and is honestly enough for me. However, I would still like to see, you know, the Academy actually acknowledge that that happened and it, this film is something that is worth talking about, you know. Um, sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through still, and I was just, I was talking. There's It's just a bunch of Wicked stuff. I, I don't really want to talk about Wicked because I'm not a big fan of musicals, nor... Do I really want to watch Wicked, especially if it since it's a part one? Um, I'm not not a not a not a big fan. Um, but maybe I'll eventually watch it one day, and maybe that'll be one to <laughs> to to come out uh, on the podcast. But I don't really, I don't really, I don't really see myself being uh, super talkative about it. If if so. Um, you know, Twitter, Twitter ain't got anything today. It looks like there's a few things, but, uh, they're kind of, they're kind of old. So I don't want to date myself too much here, but, um, oh yeah. Flow, uh, opening Friday. Look at that. I actually, um, uh, I was, uh, watching, uh, I was looking through the films from this year. Um, and I've, I've gotten through a decent amount. I can't tell you how many I have right now. Cause I, it's been, it's been a hot minute <laughs> t- since I updated my little list of actually, like, that tells me how much I have. Um, but um, Flow is a movie that is coming soon that I, I really wanted to see. Um, films that I haven't seen yet that I really want to see this year. Um, Anora, The Brutalist, that, it, you know, that's coming out. I guess, uh, I guess just talking about, like, some... Uh, like good films coming out this upcoming year is how I'm going to end the podcast today. Uh, I'm going to talk about, you know, just kind of what this year has left for film, what it, uh, you know, and some other things that, like I said, maybe, uh, maybe I missed out on. Um, sorry, just trying to get everything situated here. Um, I feel like, like, you know, I feel like asking you guys how you've been, but uh, there's no one here to respond to me, so I can't really do that. Uh, so, you know, some films coming out or that are out right now that you should probably go see. Anora, please go see Anora. Um, I don't know if Smile 2 is still in theaters, but I've heard that's some good fun. Uh, I gotta check that out. Uh, Gladiator 2 is coming out in theaters soon, and so is Wicked. I don't remember when they actually drop, but, you know, cool. Heretic, I've heard, is a pretty decent movie to go see. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, unfortunately, but I'm super excited. Uh, on the lookout, uh, you know, like I said, we were talking about The Complete Unknown earlier. Super exciting. But other, de- you know, the triple feature of December 25th this year of uh, Baby Girl Nosferatu. 
and of course the complete unknown uh super excited um unfortunately i do not think i'll be able to do that christmas day even though that is probably what i would want to do uh I would, I don't know how I would do it though. I don't know what would be first and what would be last. Um, if, if I were to do it, I think I would start out with, um, oh, that's, this is a good, this is good actually. I think, I think I would end with The Complete Unknown because I feel like that movie is going to have, um, I feel like that movie is going to have like a nice, um, uplifting tone at least at the end i feel like we're gonna end in like a very happy spot with bob dylan and uh or Tom, timmy chalamet's bob dylan um i think that would be the good i think that would be the best one to end on and then i think i think to start you would have to do baby girl and then go to nosferatu because i feel like baby girl is is a movie that may shake people it may not um you know but i think it's also supposed to be like secretary like with maggie gyllenhaal so i think there's supposed to be a really sexy aspect so i guess um maybe maybe it wouldn't be a good opener who knows who knows but i think i think that would be the best one because i think that also might just be like the most n- n- neutral because i feel like i feel like bob dylan's gonna be a hopeful good at the end and i feel like nosferatu is just gonna be uh like hell at the end so i feel like <laughs> I feel like going from hell and then into Bob Dylan, I think is a good is a good transition point. And then I think you know before you enter hell, maybe start with, um, the, uh, I don't know like a I don't know what the term would be, but like the person before Satan, and that in in this case would be Baby Girl. <laughs> that was a terrible analogy, but you know what? I don't care. We're gonna we're gonna stick with it. Uh, any anywho, some other films I've been miss I've missed. Uh, so far this year, Oddity and Under Paris, uh, Conclave, are all films that I actually want to see. I know Under Paris is terrible, but I've heard it's a bad terrible, or like a good terrible, I mean, rather. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> Super, I'm, I'm very curious about it, at the very least. Um, Queer uh, by Luca. I still don't know how to pronounce his last name, so if I'm wrong... Uh, I think it's Gua, Gua Dagnino is how I believe it's said, uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, Queer is actually coming around, I think it's coming out a day before my birthday, so uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, Queer, uh, you know, a Luca film right on my birthday with, uh, called Queer. Thanks. Anyway, <laughs> um... What else? I mean, like you know, I was already talking about the brutalist, but when that you know that's on the rise, uh, and also Baby Girl, we were talking about a little bit as well. And Flow, uh, Flow looks like to be a really just like a really wholesome adventure that I'm super excited about. Um, I'm trying to remember some other big things that are uh, coming up that aren't out yet because I feel like I missed. Oh, uh, Night Bitch is one that I'm also excited for. Y2K, uh, by, oh, I think it's Kyle Mooney directing, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for this movie, I saw that they released, um, yeah, they did, they released the, um, the cast, and it looks, it looks pretty okay, early reviews look, look okay, and, uh, you know, so I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that Kyle Mooney can pull through, because even though I haven't seen, um, I know he's not the director with it, but even though I haven't seen him in, um, oh, uh, Brigsby Bear, uh, I'm very excited to see how he acts, because I also know he's going to be acting in Y2K, so I'm super excited for that. Um, but yeah, is there any, I'm trying to think of some other big films to talk about before we, you know, before our time comes to an end here before for our you know to close out our inaugural first episode of pro in the podcast i don't i don't already like the name so we're already gonna switch it for sure but i don't know what it's gonna be maybe i'll think of a name maybe i won't but uh yeah so if any uh you know if maybe there are some projects that you would like for me to specifically talk about or um, you're curious about, um, or if there are tar- topics you would like to hear about me talk about, you know, all all of that good stuff, uh, just let me know. 
put it in the in the comments down there or something uh, yeah otherwise you know uh hope you guys enjoyed and if you didn't uh you know uh, i'm sorry not my fault though <laughs> um but yeah, so that's where we're going to end it today. I hope you guys have a good day. I'm going to go probably watch Sing Sing. And for my recommendation for you guys, um, I'll always I'll always end with a good recommendation. Uh, my recommendation, uh, you know what? It's also going to be Sing Sing. Go see Sing Sing today uh, with Coleman Domingo, A24 film. Go watch it. I'm going to go watch it right now. Yeah. Peace out, everyone.